Welcome to Rock and Roll Fridays, a podcast on musical encounters Welcome and to life. Rock and Roll Fridays. I'm so happy to have a guest yet again. Um, this is a great guest. Jared Loss is my guest today. Hi, Jared. Welcome to Rock and Roll Fridays. Hi, Michael. All right. Hi, so, Michael. How are you? So, Thanks Jared, for is, me. as you can probably tell, is in a uh, music environment. Um, you know, I, sometimes some of my guests are farther away from music, but Jared is definitely in the heart of music and he runs yeah, they, Rock, they, Rockdale Music. Talk to me about Rockdale Music and Jared, a little bit about you. Sorry, hey there. Uh, hi, I'm Jared, Jared Loss, and I am, uh, I'm a Philadelphia musician and the owner of Rockdale Music and Studios. Um, we're, in the, we're a music school and recording studio uh, in the Philadelphia suburbs, Aston, uh, Delaware County. So awesome. that's, and that's what we what, do. That's what I do. And how long, how long has Rockdale been around and kind of what, what makes Rockdale different in, in the, the, the things that you guys do? Sure. Um, so we've Rockdale has been around for about 15 years. I believe I've been running it for 13, uh, officially been the owner for about 11 or 12 years. Um, so we do, we do things a little bit different. I'm similar to like a school of rock idea. We like to, we definitely do more contemporary rock and roll. Um, I'm also a big fan of like Bill Graham. So my big plan really is like build a music scene, not just music, not just music. So we're actually, we moved into a new studio about a year and a half ago, um, and we're expanding into the space next door. So we're building our own music venue over there. And we're, we're just constantly moving, building, building more, more things. I'm taking on more debt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, but well, eventually for, it'll be for, all right. For Philly, it's like amazing how many music venues are coming out. But what you guys do, I mean, really you focus, right? There's a lot of getting younger people and kids involved in music at an earlier age, which because of the school systems cutting back on funding and, um, you know, I'll call the, the arts, right? Sure, um, yeah. I mean, I think that's a critical role that you play in the community to get people involved in music. How, how does that right. come well, along thank- and how, how do you reach those kids and, and get them hooked on, hooked on music? Yeah, so I mean, like like you said, I mean, I think well, actually a lot of our local school districts do a fantastic job uh, doing doing great programming with what what they have. Um, I do feel that sometimes these things are, are some some music education is a little bit. Why are we still doing it that way? For instance, like recorders. Why are we teaching kids to like learn how to play recorders? Like right. I've never seen one person be a professional recorder player. Like there's not a, you know, Pied Pipers aren't really needed uh, in today's right. economy. Uh, it just it seems like a very strange thing. So we actually try and approach it differently. Um, we find like drums especially are the best way to first learn how to, I, I'm, I may be, I may be uh, biased. I started as a drummer uh, mainly, but if once you understand rhythm, then you can really expand that out to all different types of instruments and and all all music. Do do a lot of your students kind of gravitate to different instruments as well, or do they do you do you have like a methodology of how you get the younger people in, sure. into playing? So, yeah, I mean, we actually start our music programming at like four or three or four years old. So like that's super young. I mean, most schools won't get kids started until six to eight. Um, we and and like our first program, it's called Rock Band Junior. It's it's really about enjoyment of music. It's just about getting on a drum, like a mini drum set and banging around on a drum set, learning a little bit of stuff. And they learn, you know, piano and forte and presto and like you know all these different terms but it's really just about getting in there and banging air banging around on the drums um we do we do like a dance party at the end of yeah. each session it's just about like four to seven year olds like being four to seven year olds with musical instruments well around. what a concept make it fun right 
Like, why do, why do I do it? <laughs> right. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I've seen it on the sports side with younger people, you know, having three practices a week with four or five year olds. It's like, why? Right. Yeah, right. Just let them have fun. Right. Um, I, I mean, I always, I always, this is something I have to remind myself of sometimes too, but it's called playing music. It's not called working music. It's that's, we're that's we're here to play. Like yeah. it's, it's not supposed to be work. Sometimes it's work. But when it gets to be feeling like work, you have to remember, that's when you have to be like, hey, man, this is play. This is play. Yeah. Just get back to playing. And then the work part kind of goes away. And how did you get started in music in your, in your life and kind of growing up in, did you grow up in the Philadelphia area your whole life? Yeah, yes. Yep. I grew up in, De I'm a Delco. I'm Delco uh, boy. Um, so I grew up in the Philadelphia area and... Um, I, I was really kind of like always, I'm actually my parents put me into like a study when I was like an infant in music and um, at Swarthmore College and they they were just playing music and, and I guess checking to see how ch infants react to music and apparently I was moving and dancing like all the time every time uh, they put on the music. So I guess it's always kind of been something that I'm into. Um, I think that's also why I really like teaching the little, little ones is right. because right. I, if you nurture it at that age, that, that I think that it can, it can only do good things. Um, I kind of put music away and wasn't, wasn't, it was more of a back burner thing. I always was keeping involved with music, but all the way through high school, um, I was, I would play, I played in marching band. I played in concert band. I was always playing. I played drum set. I played in a couple bands, but it was kind of just like, something I did for fun. Again, just for fun. It was just like right. a side thing. I was more into, I was, I was a wrestler and I played ice hockey and lacrosse. And, um, so I was more into the sports and then, you know, after high school, I wasn't good enough to do sports in college. So it was kind of like, Oh, I still have music. Then it took over more a part of my life is because it was still there for me, even when the athletics went, went away. away. Yeah. Um, and I think that's another beautiful thing about music is it's it's a lifelong hobby. It's something that like even if even if I lost both my legs, I could still. I mean, look at the Def Leppard's right. drummer lost right. his arm, still right. touring, still drum, still yeah. touring drummer, right? That's that's a that's a that doesn't usually that doesn't happen in sports, really. Right. And You're, what are some of the instruments that you play in uh, some of the venues you've played in Philadelphia? I know you've you've played out in bands what are um yeah so I, I start so i started as a drummer my parents always had a baby grand piano player piano in their in their uh at home so my older brother played piano and i would just kind of go and sound out some of the stuff he was playing so i was mainly kind of playing by ear with the piano um my brother's much more like route playing like has to does it by the book right um, so it's funny cause we both played music, but we didn't really get, we weren't really able to jam cause we like spoke like different languages in music. Right. Um, we still, sometimes we try it out, but it, it, it's, it's like I said, it's like somebody speaking Japanese and somebody speaking Mandarin. Like it's, right. it's, yeah, we could, we can like have a little bit of a conversation, but it's kind of just like, Hey, how are you? Right. I'm good. How are you? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. not like really yeah in-depth conversation um well, you see and, you see that with professional musicians i mean at the highest levels where they try to get together and it just doesn't you know no pun intended it doesn't yeah. sing right it Chemistry, just doesn't yeah. they don't work it they look don't at, work yeah, out right super groups super groups that have just like yeah not worked out or not or not as good as the sum or the as the individual parts the sum isn't wasn't as good as the individual parts by themselves right right uh, so then I picked up guitar late in high school, um, bass, and kind of just, I play a little bit of ukulele, you know, I play some banjo, like, I like, I like strings. Um, I never really got into wind instruments unless like harmonica or melodica counts, but, um, right. and um, I play in my band is, uh, that was, which is all a bunch of guys that I went to high school with um, at Pencrest High School is uh we're called the real feel we're actually working on our second full length album and an ep that we've got pretty awesome close to pin, and what close what to uh record. what sound is is your band what what's kind of i uh my, our tagline is groove groove infused rock that funks your soul so <laughs> it's 
it's like a blues rock funk soul kind of vibe um nice it's i mean we i i love funk music i love i love the blues um that's the and and that's pretty much where i do a lot a lot of the songwriting uh collaborating with with the other guys in the band um but that yeah so that's kind of a vibe for that one awesome and then I play with um, two bands in Philadelphia at the moment. Um, I play with Scantron, which is like a, a 70s power pop garage rock uh, quintet. <laughs> and then uh, a, I play with a band called Cosmic Guilt. Uh, and we just actually, I play keyboards in all of those bands, sing in, sing in all of them too. Awesome. Um, and Cosmic Guilt was just on XPN. We did the Free at Noon oh, thing. Oh, nice. We, and yeah, and, and it's picking up some seams. That's a ten-piece psychedelic country folk band. Hi, so, yeah, Cosmic know, Guilt. I, I said, I said quintet. What is a ten-piece? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Tentet, <laughs> nectet, or something like that. I, yeah. I'm not sure. I've never been in a ten-piece band. So, 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 what's your advice to parents out there to get their children, you know? into music involved in music and you know how to go about the right way of making the experience positive right because yeah i mean we've all been you know forced into lessons and it's so, that experience yes, is it's just funny not... that you say that i mean that's a, it's a great question it's funny that you say that like i was never forced like my parents never forced me to practice um I think I went through phases where I wanted to practice a lot and then phases where like I didn't where I didn't touch my instrument. Um, I took lessons like fairly consistently. I would take lessons for a couple months and then kind of take a break. Then I might take lessons with somebody different. Then I might switch instruments. So I think I mean, you know, I'm, I'm kind of one of those jack of all trades, master of none in music in music in, in life. I'm very much that way. Um, and like that works for my person. Personality, I, right. I, you know, I'm not a virtuoso and I'm completely fine with not being a virtuoso. Um, but like I can jump into pretty much every band and help out and make the band better. So um, that's kind of the niche that I've carved out for myself. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but for, so, I mean, I a lot of my parents, our students, parents ask me this all the time, like, oh, they're not practicing a lot. And I'm like, well, you know, are they enjoying it still? Is it? Is it like, cause you know, I, I, uh, another th joke I kind of say all the time is that like, Hey, we might be like a little bit expensive for music lessons, but we're really cheap therapy. And like, that's kind of like, I look at my lessons as like, this is also just time for like somebody just to be themselves and like, what do you like? Okay. Let's like Play delve that, into yeah. like what you like and like why do we like this and like how do we make that music um, yep. so it's a little bit different than not just uh not just how you play it's like why we play is a lot of what what i kind of well, I, might that's sound the, like, I might sound like hippy dippy kind of stuff but no it's no and i think that's the beauty of music because a three chord song that you figure out could be this enlightenment moment yeah. i mean i've had it i don't you know my playing is very uh, beginner for the last 15 years, but when you hit play, you know, a three chord song that Tom Petty wrote and you sing Thank it, you. it sounds like it's you, right? You're yeah. doing it. So. I, was, I just taught, I would just watch that whole Beatles documentary that, that just came out, which was amazing. Um, and then we, so one of my students also watched it and he wanted to do, they wanted to do Get Back. Get Back to three chord song. Yeah. Get Back is a three chord song, like it's, yeah. and what a song it is. Yeah, yeah, totally. So Jared, uh, you know, the premise of my show is everyone's got a musical run in. I mean, you work in the industry, you've played music with bands, you've played in venues in Philly. Do you have a little bit of a musical run in that you could talk about yeah yeah i got i've got plenty i actually ended up i, w I worked at world cafe live for a oh, very cool a time yeah. so i got to meet a lot of like you know the not high high top 40 artists but lots of crazy uh like art grace potter um sunny landreth I, lots of lots of those people but my funny story um in music is actually from playing with my band the real feel in the early years of the real feel uh we were probably i was probably in my 
early to mid twenties. And, uh, we would go up to New York city and play there pretty, pretty frequently. Um, and we had just moved up from like the, the smallest clubs into like the next tier up clubs. Um, and we're really stoked, but it's like New York city always has, they'll have like eight, 10 bands on a, on a night, a line. Yeah. It's like, yeah. It's just a, it's it's like a nightmare as an artist. Uh, New York City, like I, I kind of have PTSD all about New York City, and I, I think it's mainly because of like gigging in New York City as a small artist is like it's awful. You have to park far away from a venue. You got to drag all your gear there. Yeah. And then what happened also this night is I think we were I think we were scheduled to play at like 10 p.m. Um, you know, and we're just driving up one night and coming back and like, it's 9:45, and the second band's on and we're the sixth band. We're like, it's <laughs> not, we're not going on at 10 PM. Um, so it keeps getting delayed, keeps getting delayed. It's like past midnight. Now we're like, we have no idea when we're going on. And the show promoter comes up and says like, Hey, we're going to actually need to bump you back another one. And like another spot. And at this point, I was just impatient and I was like, no, we're not like, we're not moving. You're already two hours behind. Like, we're not moving. I, I'm putting my foot down. And um, they, they were saying, oh, well, the artist that's c supposed to play after you is underage, under 21. And they needed to get her on stage before one o'clock in the morning, something right. like that. Um, And I was just pretty much like, you know, that sounds like her problem you know again i was impatient <laughs> i was just like i'm sorry you know like well she could she be moved to a different night or something like we need to get back to philly um so anyway then this girl comes up to me and she's like no we need like we need to have a conversation um you don't like know who you're talking to pretty much and i was like no who 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 am i talking to and she was like well i'm actually the manager for I can't even remember the guy's name. Um, like I said, he's going to be obscure, but he wrote the song. I like to move it, move it. Oh that, yeah. Yeah. Bum, 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 yeah. Da, yeah. 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 Da, 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 which is, <laughs> Hey, I'm actually love the song, but it was just such a funny, like right, that, yeah. that was the flex yeah, was like so this like... guy. And it was like called like the coconut club i think like his group was called like the coconut bangers club or something weird like that and the flex was like you were like wrote, oh, like i like to move it. and i was on. like and i was like dude i actually love that song but I, yeah i don't care like that's a fun like i don't like that does not change anything anything for for me so long story short we did end up moving <laughs> because I think the guys in my band, it, it ended up escalating actually after that situation where he got in my face about something and then he was going to call the fire department and have like the, cause it was a, it, it, it ended up getting very, very strange and like details I don't quite remember. Yeah. But I think that's kind of why like, we just de-escalated by being like, fine, you know what? Just go, go on stage because I am i don't really want to get stabbed here tonight because of uh, because of this. And we killed it. Our set, we absolutely slayed it and the whole crowd loved us and it was great. But that That's might be awesome. one of like the last times I played in New York City with the real feel. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure in New York City, people pull out their ace card like that a lot, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's like oh, definitely. Their, their go to ace card is. Yeah, it's so funny because it's a completely different city. Like, I mean, Philly, like, I actually love playing New York City because the crowd, like, actually gets really into music in New York City. They're a great listening crowd. Philadelphia is not the best listening city. We're tough. And more of a it, drinking city. Yeah, we're tough in like that. We don't, we don't like a lot of people don't like dance when they go out to shows. They like actually stop and listen. I so I should I, I should correct myself. We're a great listening city. We're not like a great energy in the crowd kind of city. We kind of make it tough on bands yeah. too. Well, I think the venue has a lot to do with that too. Yes. Um, yeah. The amount of 
uh, substances sure. to to the ratio to what time it is. Yeah. To the amount of women to men. I mean, there's. I also maybe there, right? I also like, maybe making excuses for that my band didn't make people really good. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Which is that's hey that might be on me, but no, it's, it's definitely like one of those like towns where you get done playing and you kind of feel like, oh, I don't know if we killed it. And then like the whole crowd, you walk out and everybody was like, that was awesome, man. That was one of the best shows I've seen. I'm like, what? It seems yeah. like nobody was listening, <laughs> but it's interesting. So how, how can Jared, how can people find um, Rockdale music? Is it rockdalemusic.com? Yep, rockdalemusic.com is what we do for our lessons. Rockdalestudios.com for our recording services and everything. I mean, we're all over social media and everything like that, too. Awesome. Um, and, uh, yeah, bands, Cosmic Guilt. Keep an eye out for Cosmic Guilt. Scantron. Scantron is like almost every member of Scantron is also in Cosmic Guilt. So while Cosmic Guilt is playing a lot, Scantron's usually playing a little. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, awesome. And Real Feel, we should have some new material out soon, too. Awesome. Well, Jared, it's been a pleasure. I'm so happy you could jump on and um, I'll, I'll share everyone. I'll share these links out to everyone. And thanks for being on Rock and Roll Fridays. Uh, thank you, Michael. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much.